we are going to ask you ten questions live. We've had millions of questions come in. Okay. So, uh, yeah, we'll, we'll crack straight on. You answer them in as short or as long as you like. Okay. Question number one. Do you play drums every day? That is from Jane A. Um, no, I don't play every day. I probably should play more. Um, but, no, I, I do... Um, I don't know. I, no, not not a huge amount. When I'm when I'm not in London, when I'm off at a, a, a drum kit in my little farmhouse, and I tend to play that a lot more because you know you can make a lot more noise. So uh, when I get to play, I prefer playing a real drum kit to an electronic one. Uh huh. So how often do you do? You, do you need to practice? Yes, <laughs> yes, especially you know for um, you know before we we're, we're already working on some new demos and things, so it's fun to be playing along with those and trying to work um. out a few drum parts, and it's it's a good way of of just getting a feel for new songs. Sounds good. Uh, question number two is from Adrian J eighty three. Don't think that's her real name. Uh, if you had to sing a karaoke song, which song would you pick? Oh God, I'm so shy when it comes to that kind of thing. Um, I really don't know. I, it would have to be something that I knew inside out. So um, I don't know. Maybe. Graceland or something. I don't know. That could work. Simon. I could see that. Have you ever actually done karaoke? Not since I was about 18. Um, so, uh, yeah, no, not not for a long time. <laughs> Do you know what, it, what you did when you were 18? No, I was very drunk. Okay. Best forgotten. <laughs> yeah. Uh, question three is from Bishkoff. Uh, hi Richard, it's so lovely when Keen say hello to fans after the gigs. Did you all make a conscious decision to do this when you started out or did it just sort of happen that you started doing it or, or what? That's a good question. I think it just sort of happened. You know, we used to play gigs in places where, you know, the the exit was the exit. So, you know, everyone left out of the same door and I guess a few people would hang around and you'd say hello. So, um, I, I remember a, a hazy night out in a in a bar after a show with with Chris Flynn and maybe Drinky after one of our first sort of gigs out of London um, on our first UK tour and I think there was just a bar the other side of you know the audience so everyone just went there and I, I don't know it just developed out of meeting people like that but it's always a nice thing to do we always feel really bad when we have to leave straight away and uh, don't get to say hello to people, but sometimes you just have to do that. Yeah, and I guess it's a nice chance to to actually interact with the fans and speak to the people who are buying your music and coming to gigs and yeah, and get requests for songs and uh, yeah, comments on the set list that yes. kind of thing. And so yeah, it's, it's I always really enjoy it, which I guess is why I tend to spend a, a reasonable amount of time doing it. And I got given this mug after uh, one particular gig. I think it was in Texas. So thank you. For the mug, I'm having my tea out there. Wow. I was going to ask you, actually, just to prove we're live, we've had a question come in from, on Twitter from Christopher Ranger, and he says, is it tea or coffee you're drinking? It's tea, and uh, yes, it is live. There's my watch. It's five past 11. There we are. And, uh, well, here it is. Live. Live on the internet. Uh, next from question. House, actually, from your house. Yeah, this is Richard's house. house. <laughs> Welcome to Richard's house. So as the internet goes, it's my fault. Uh, one Fox Lady, or also known as Ange, would like to know what is your favourite Keen song to play live? That's a good question. It it does vary. I do have a... It depends on the, the sort of vibe of the gigs. On the Forest Tour, I really enjoyed playing things like You Don't See Me, because um, you saw that... You know, you were outdoors and you had the sun going down and it just seemed to really work in that um, sort of environment. Um, I always enjoy playing Atlantic. Um, the backing vocals are really fun on that and um, Perfect Symmetry as well. It's hard, it's quite a hard one to play but um, and sing because the, the backing vocals require a lot of deep breaths. But um, it's incredibly satisfying when, when we play it well and people... There are always you can always see a few people in the crowd who are just completely immersed in the song, and there's there's nothing better than that. Absolutely, uh, Lindsay, who's on Twitter, has just noticed your cat condo, as she calls it, when we moved the camera. Should we point towards your cat condo? You could if you like. <laughs> Look at the cat condo. <laughs> What's that all about? It's um, well, we live in a flat, so that it's something for the cats to jump up and down, and more importantly, to scratch, so that they don't scratch all our furniture. But uh -huh. they, to be honest, they do just tend to scratch. It looks—it's like a proper cat tower, tower block. 
It is. It's pretty crazy. I, um, I'm slightly sceptical as to whether the cats like it or not, but um, they do scratch it, so thank God. Yes, that's good. Uh, next question. What colour socks are you wearing right now? Uh, I'm wearing green socks. Should we flip the camera under the table? To see your... There they are. There they are. There's the green socks. Yeah. Green socks. Are you, are you a green socks kind of guy? Today. <laughs> You just take it whichever way <laughs> it comes. Uh, that question was from uh, Crazy. Question six. If you could travel back in time to photograph any city during any time period, where would you go? Ask Rachel oh, in New York. That's an interesting question. Yeah, I thought it was a good question. Um, God, it'd be pretty cool to go to like ancient Rome or something, wouldn't yeah. it? Or Athens when, when it was all... Um, you know, new. Absolutely, yeah. <laughs> still with still, a camera. <laughs> still, still had all the, uh, you know, all the original sort of decoration up, things like that. Yeah, I think probably, probably Rome with you know the Colosseum and all that sort of stuff. That would be pretty epic. That would be amazing. I agree. Uh, question seven is from Mary. She asks if you've ever been shaved by a cutthroat barber. Oh no, I. I haven't, although when I have had haircuts where they've used, you know, when they do the tidying up thing and instead of using clippers, they've used a, a comb and a cutthroat razor. I've had that and that was, um, it's a pretty weird feeling. But no, I've not, as you can see, I'm, I don't really go in for the regular shaving. So no, no, no I haven't. I can see that. I'm sure Colin has though. Yes. Yeah. We've seen Colin today. Yeah, Colin's staying. He's our lodger at the moment. <laughs> nice to see Colin. There he is. Tour manager. He's this waving. Place. He's waving. He says hello. He's too shy yeah, to appear on camera. Hi. Hey, there you are. You may have just heard a little peep from Colin. Uh, Remco on Twitter just asked if it's true that you weren't allowed to join Mount Desolation because you shaved your beard. <laughs> That's a great question. Um, I was going to sing some backing vocals, but I was... I was driving down to to the to Tim's house to record, well, to take some photos, and he said, "Oh, if you get down, we'll do some backing vocals while you're there." And uh, my car got driven into by a lorry, so uh, I I couldn't take the photos, and I ended up having to get the tube back home, oh, and my car was carted off on the back of a truck. So um, I never got to appear that, or I would have been on the Mount Desolation record. But there are some photos I took in the artwork. You have so. a copy right here. Do you want to I hold do. it up? I do. I'm lucky. When's this album being released, Richard? This album, which has excellent photography in it and also some good music, um, is being released on uh, the 18th of This October. coming Monday. Yeah, on Monday. So, yeah, I took. Um, I went down to the studio while they were in London. Um, I took my camera down and uh, took a load of photos. So... God, I don't know. Am I allowed to do this? It's their album. And uh, anyway, I took some of the photos. So there they are. Um, anyway, it's brilliant. I, I love it. So it's I worth buying it's just as a little mini Richard Hughes photo album. Exactly. Exactly. But they, they they were all very beardy indeed, as you'll see from the photos. Tim <laughs> and Jesse looked like they'd been at sea for six months <laughs> or something. It was quite hilarious. It's amazing. Uh, King Lars from Norway is coming to London soon and Ooh. to see some musicals. He'd like, or he or she, I assume it's a he, would like to know if you recommend any clothes shops to check out whilst in London. Oh, blimey. Clothes shops. Um, well, God, I'm... <sighs> I I think just for the experience of a cool old old school London shop that's kind of modern and kind of cool, go to Liberties and go to the furniture bit on the top floor because they always have some really lovely old bits of, sort of rosewood 60s furniture and okay. stuff up there. And they've also got some good clothes. In fact, they've got everything. And it's a really good shop for getting your mum a prezi while you're in London. So uh, that'd be good. They have lots of, you know scented candles and, and things that mums like. Do you much of a shopper? I'm not much of a shopper these days, to be honest. I used to buy lots of t-shirts when I was on tour and I just haven't got room for any more. So photography has fortunately replaced um, capitalism in, in my touring. <laughs> <laughs> well done. Uh, Joanna would like to know why you decided to set up a Twitter account. I thought it was really interesting and worth trying um and i always read tons of stuff on the internet whether it's news whether it's political or entertainment or 
film reviews or gig reviews or whatever that that I um, I always think you know when I read an interesting article I always want to recommend it to people and that's what I use Twitter for quite a lot is sending out links to articles that I've read or a podcast that I listen to or you know uh, someone that I think is really interesting and, and it, so could, quite often I feel like I'm speaking about things that I'm not an expert about but with Twitter you can sort of send a link out to an article by a person who is an expert on a certain area so instead of saying I think this is rubbish you can send a, a link out to an article that explains why something is rubbish or brilliant or true or whatever uh -huh. and uh, your 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 keen uh, your name is Richard Keen it is Richard Keen people want to find you all one word uh, final question. Well, final question of our ten. We may see if there's any more on Twitter. Uh, Fixer uh, says that in the What Do You Think Of interview with Tom, you were speaking with a lot of enthusiasm about snare drums when Tom interrupted you and prevented you from finishing talking about right. snare drums. Did he? Yeah, apparently so. Right. I don't remember that either, but apparently so. <laughs> Fixer would like you to finish. What, what What is it you love about snare drums so much? Well, it's not just snare drums and drums in... In fact, my hallway is blocked by a drum kit at the moment, um, one of my many drum kits. Um, this, I don't know, I guess guitarists, you know, end up with millions of guitars and Tim's got millions of keyboards and Tom's got, I don't know, a few microphones <laughs> <laughs> and quite a few guitars. Mm. And um, yeah, so drums are just, they're, they're just a, a, firstly, they can be incredibly beautiful. And secondly, when you really get into it, they all sound very different. And, and I enjoy being able to sort of use all kinds of different sounds when we get into a studio. So I have quite a, se quite a selection these days, quite a, an extensive collection. Of Is there that, and when you're listening to a record, will you be able to hear, oh, that's that kind of snare drum? Or... Sometimes. It depends how it's recorded. Trouble is, once you pile loads of stuff on top, it, especially when you're listening to something on headphones, you, you know, if you've got a really good set of headphones. Yeah. Sorry, got oh. music coming out of my computer. We've got some um, music, but yeah, interrupted again. Um, yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's just I, impossible. I don't know. I, it's a bit of a self-indulgence, but um, I don't know. They they are beautiful things, and um, they some of them are pretty rare. So when you get and another thing that's fun to do when you're on the road is to just go around. It's always fun to go to music shops and uh, see see what you can find. And mm. you know, Jesse does that with guitars, and Tim does it with keyboards, and you know. As you, I don't know, we did that video in France, in Paris, when we were recording and went to, went keyboard shopping, oh, and yeah. you know, you never know what you're going to find. So it's it's always fun to do. And like when you meet with other drummers, do you do you talk about drums? <laughs> sometimes it depends, but yeah, sometimes. Um, but most of the time, no, we just talk about you know how all the other people in our bands are, you know, idiots. Yes. And that you're the best one. <laughs> exactly. You should be at the front. Hi, Beth. Beth just arrived. Beth just arrived. It's like Keen Central around here. Yeah, exactly. This is, just, this is what Rich's house is like. <laughs> Keen people just come and go all day long. Free Wi Fi. Uh, yeah, <laughs> it's like a glorified internet cafe. <laughs> um, right, let's see if there's another question on Twitter as a final. Uh, what are you doing after this interview? asks Isabel. What you got planned? Well, obviously we'd, we'll be filming more questions. We're it. filming another 40 questions, so we'll be here till midnight. And. Um, I'm going to the dentist. Dear. But I've got a nice Swedish dentist, so um, I, it's not quite as, as horrific, as, I don't know, as, as my old sort of school nightmares of dentists are. Any, any specific reason? Is it just a checkup or is there a specific? Are you having work? I, I have had a checkup. I think I'm having some work done. Oh, really? But, but I'm, I'm trying not to engage in it. They've got a TV on the ceiling above oh, the really? um, above where you sort of lie down and get attacked. So um, I'm going to take it something to watch. Probably something funny. Oh, what, you get to choose what you take. You can take a DVD and watch whatever you want. Yeah. Wow. That's amazing. That sounds like a good dentist. Yeah, exactly. Um, cool. And then. Uh... Yeah, we, we should oh, probably... Oh, and we're doing, um, we're doing a little charity show tonight um, that Tom has arranged. Um, so that's Keen, that is. Um, so, yeah, we're playing a few songs, uh, which is a sort of benefit show for Rwanda Aid, which, as many of you all know, is a, a charity that Tom's dad works for. So we're doing oh, yeah. a little, uh, little acoustic show for that tonight, which is in London somewhere. For, 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 presumably not open to the public. I think... 
if you were going to go, you would need to have already bought tickets, which are incredibly expensive. Oh, okay. But, you know, it's kind of around it, so exactly. we don't mind for once. Marvellous. All right, well, that's our 15 minutes done. We have literally just tipped over the 15-minute mark. Well, thanks for tuning in. That's pretty cool. Yeah. Um, uh, any final messages? For your, um, your well, um, well done the people that managed to get those Chilean miners out. I was very pleased to see that they all got out safely. So, yeah. Um, I, hope, I hope in future they'll be a bit safer. Yes. Um, but, really. yeah, well, you know, that was... A, very good bit of news. Well done, Chile. And I know we have a lot of fans in Chile, and I, I hope we get back there soon. So, uh, yeah, see ya. Marvellous. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.